everyone. I'm Chef Susie with Escoffier Online and welcome to our live session this morning. Today we're going to be making a stolen bread, which is a classic bread that's um, typically made this time of year around the holiday season and it has a German origin. And like a lot of things that we're making, there's just so many variations. They're really limitless. I'm going to show you a basic variation, one that I like with some flavor combinations that I like. But really, be sh uh, feel free to um, you know put your own signature touch on something like this. And um, what this bread is is it's just a basic sweet dough, and it's leavened with yeast and we're going to be mixing it on the machine and it's an enriched dough so it's got butter in it it's got sugar in it it's got eggs so it's going to take a little bit longer to rise because of that weight in there it's going to have a nice kind of yellow color to it a little bit sweet we're going to be adding some dried fruits to this and then after it's baked we'll be dredging it with powdered sugar and this is just the classic stolen bread so knowing that let's get started Okay, what we're going to do first is we're going to make our sponge for this. So um, I've got some milk that I've warmed up. And please let me know if you have any questions. So to make, so to make the sponge, I've got my warm milk and I've got my yeast. And today we're going to be using cake yeast. And instead of dry yeast, this is um, something that you'll find in the refrigerator section of uh, some grocery stores or some specialty stores. And the dry yeast is exactly as it says. It's dry. You can find it on the shelf. It's dehydrated. This cake yeast is um, in a cake form. It comes in a brick that's usually about one pound or you'll find it in smaller packages. And um, it's, um, it's moist and it's active and um, it smells great, smells really yeasty. And I prefer to use cake yeast in a lot of my recipes because um, I just, I like the way that it, uh, it, leave, it leavens. It seems to um, become active faster and um, I like the flavor of it too. So you just kind of break it up and dissolve it in here. You can also use this, um, even though we're doing the sponge method today, you can use cake yeast um, when doing the straight dough method too. So uh, it's just as versatile as um, dry active yeast. So I've got my cake yeast with my warm milk. We're just gonna mix this together. And we are going to be using bread flour in this recipe. It's a high in gluten and um, great for making bread. You'll see some breads made with all-purpose flour, but typically a strong flour such as bread flour will be used. And um, to make our sponge, we're just going to dissolve this yeast a little bit in our warm milk. And then we are going to be adding a little bit of our bread flour and we're going to set this aside until it becomes very active. Okay, so like I said, let me know if you have any questions. So we're going to be adding a little bit of bread flour here. And we're just going to add enough flour until this becomes thick. I'm adding a little bit at a time so it doesn't get too lumpy on me. My flour all the way over here, but that's okay. That's a good place for it. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, this yeast is already starting to become active in this sponge. So you see a little bit of bubbling started. That's because our milk is nice and warm. And nextly, I'm just going to be sprinkling a little bit of flour on here. And I like to sprinkle a little flour on my sponge. You could wrap this with plastic because um, when it starts to grow, it cracks a little bit. So you can see the activity. We're going to set this aside. And I've got a sponge that I made earlier, so we're going to take a look at it. OK. So this is the sponge that I made earlier. As you can see, it's very active. and. Nice and bubbly. And the flour that I put on top actually cracked away a little bit. So we're going to set this aside and we're going to be adding this to our mixture. But first, what we're going to do is we are going to cream 
our butter and our sugar. And we're going to add some of our flavoring as well. And please let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so we've got some granulated sugar. And like I said, this is a sweet dough. And um, it's not a laminated dough at all. We're just going to be using it um, the way it is once we mix it. So once we cream our butter and our sugar, we're going to be adding our eggs. And we're going to be adding our flavoring, a little bit of um, lemon zest and a little bit of vanilla and almond flavor too. And we're gonna scrape this down. So with the flavoring for the stolen bread, I'm adding vanilla and I'm adding almond flavor and I'm adding a little bit of lemon zest. You can use orange zest, you can use um, anise flavor if you like, or even a rum flavor. But um, really the uh, varieties are very limitless with this. Okay, so we've got our butter and sugar incorporated. We're gonna be adding our eggs a little bit at a time. And we're gonna give them a chance to emulsify. And then we're going to add our sponge mixture to this. And please let me know if you have any questions. When adding um, eggs to butter, it just takes a little bit to get this all emulsified. That's why you're going to add your eggs just a little bit at a time. And we're going to scrape this down really good. It's a very basic sweet dough. If you have a favorite sweet dough, that will work as well. Okay, so we're ready to add a little bit more of our egg mixture. Like I said, with this, it's a little bit at a time to help this incorporate. You don't want it all separated. Hey, and like I said, please let me know if you have any questions. So we're going to go ahead and get this scraped down, just about ready to go. And then we'll be adding our sponge mixture to this. the rest of our eggs and we're going to be adding our lemon zest and like I said you can add some orange and the flavors that you can add to this are limitless. I'm going to add a little splash of vanilla and I'm also going to be adding a little splash. This is about three quarters of a teaspoon in case you're wondering and a little bit of almond extract. So like I said, you could add um, anise would be a nice flavor to add or even some rum extract too. So just keep that in mind when you're making these doughs that the flavors are really limitless. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and let this get a little bit more incorporated. And then we're gonna go ahead and add our sponge mixture and then we'll be adding our flour last. about incorporated. I'm going to let it go just a little bit longer.
Okay, next we're going to go ahead and add our sponge, and that's going to help bring the rest of this together for us. And we'll make sure that we get all of that out of here. With our leavening agent is going to help our bread rise. Okay. So we've got our, our sponge added. So next we're going to be adding our flour to this. And we're going to, we're going to mix this on a low speed so it doesn't go everywhere. And once this is incorporated, we're going to be adding our dried fruits is going to add a lot of flavor and even some color to this. Okay, so we're going to let this, um, going to let this knead just a little bit. Okay, so next we're going to be adding our dried fruit. So I've got some raisins. I have some golden raisins and some brown raisins here. And what I did is I soaked these in a little bit of rum and a little bit of orange juice just to give them a little bit of extra flavor. And I also have my, um, my cherries, my candy cherries. I have green cherries and red cherries and that's just gonna add some nice color for this time of year. So I only soak my raisins in the rum and um, the orange juice because sometimes these cherries will bleed into this a little bit. So let's go ahead and add these. You're gonna add these at the end where you're not gonna do much mixing at all. Okay. And I don't add the liquid because I don't want to have any extra liquid in my recipe. So we're gonna go ahead and add our cherries and um, you can add more of these fruits if you like. You can add less of them. It's just, um, you know, what uh, flavor combination you'd like and um, making this uniquely your own. Okay, so this is our stolen bread mixture. It smells great, it smells very classic from here. Okay, so what we're going to do is, um, we're just going to set this aside for its first proof and then we are going to knock it down and then form it into the loaf. Okay. So this usually you're going to let this um, proof typically until it doubles in size. And I kind of like to clean up the edges but I like to keep it in the same bowl that it's in. And you can see it's got some nice coloring from the cherries, from the red and green cherries. So this will get covered and set aside until it doubles in size. It usually takes about 20 minutes, but if your kitchen is cool, it could take longer. And if you're busy, it's okay if you leave it go for a little bit longer and just get done what you have to do. You certainly wouldn't want to leave it sit overnight, but if you need to leave it sit for an hour or so, That'll be okay too. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this aside and take a look at some dough that I made earlier. Okay, so I have a nice piece of stolen dough here that I made earlier. Can I clean up our work area a little bit? And um, it's doubled in size. I made a little bit smaller batch earlier for just um, maybe one loaf, and the one that I made just now is for two loaves. So this is our dough. So um, it's nice and proofed. And what we're going to do is we're going to knock that down and then we're going to form our classic stolen loaf. But before we do that, I like to fill my stolen with a little bit of almond paste. You can use marzipan. And what you do is um, you'll roll this into a log and then you'll put it inside the bread for a filling. So what I'm gonna do before I get my bread dough out is I'm gonna roll my log of almond paste. And like I said, you can use marzipan and um, 
You can flavor this with different things too. You can even add a little bit of extract to your almond paste or your marzipan. So I like to do, you know, a good size log. It's almost um, an inch thick. And I'll put that right in the middle of the bread. Okay, so let's set this aside. Let's go ahead and take a look at our dough. So you can roll this or you can just press it into shape. I just like to press mine into shape. So we're just going to flour our board. This dough can be a little sticky, but you definitely don't want too much flour. Okay, so we're just going to press this into an oval shape. And like I said, you can use a rolling pin, but it's like the scones. I just kind of like to press the dough. And this is going to make a nice one pound um, loaf of bread. So we're going to do a nice oval shape. We're going to get the sides out a little bit. Really easy. You don't need a rolling pin at all. You can use it if you want to. And this is not something that you have to make real perfect. It can be a little bit rustic. So nextly, we are going to brush a layer of butter on this dough. But first, before we do that, you can do it afterward. We're just going to make a dent in the center. And this is where our almond paste is going to go. Okay, so you're going to brush this with butter. And this is the inside of the, um, the bread. And as you can see, you can see the golden raisins and the brown raisins and the cherries. Nice and colorful, very festive. Okay, so we're going to put our almond paste in. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take one of these flaps and we're just going to go over. And this is pretty much the way that you do the classic Pullman, dough, Pullman loaf too. And this is why you will see the stolen bread with a high side and a low side to it. Okay, so this is it. It was pretty easy, wasn't it? Make sure that you're making this for your friends and family this holiday season. They will love it. And if they haven't tried it before, they'll really enjoy it. So this is going to go on to a baking sheet lined with parchment or you can um, use the silpat too. I've got a sheet with a silpat here. And this is going to proof. You can put it in a proof box if you have one or you can uh, room proof it. And before it gets proofed, it gets brushed again with butter and this is going to give it the classic dark crust that this has. Okay, so keep in mind when you're proofing this dough that you're not going to proof this all the way. You're just going to proof it about um, three quarters of the way. Okay, so just right before it's proofed, you are going to go ahead and bake it. And um, I usually bake these at about 365 degrees. If you have smaller loaves or if you're even making maybe some little knots or some little rolls go ahead and bake those a little bit higher but for these bigger loaves especially this one a one pounder you're going to bake this at about 365. okay so let's go ahead and set this aside and we'll take a look at one of the loaves that i made earlier okay so this is the classic stolen bread it's um nice and soft on the outside it gets this dark color and I like to bake mine nice and dark like this you can bake them just a little bit lighter but typically um, for me stolen has a very um, dark brown crust like this one has so nextly we are going to cover this in powdered sugar you can dredge this in powdered sugar as well you can fill like maybe a pan with powdered sugar and you can actually put the loaf in there and kind of roll it around too or you can just like heavily dust it like I'm doing with this one. 
and it just looks very holiday like once you get the powdered sugar on here and um, like I said you can dredge it in the powdered sugar some people like to do that they'll fill the pan with powdered sugar and they'll put the loaf in there and turn it over and get both sides but either way whichever you like so let's go ahead and cut into the stolen bread and please let me know if you've made stolen bread before or maybe some different flavors that you'd like to try like I said the lemon and the orange is a nice touch and you can even add a little bit of rum filling as well I mean rum extract as well okay so this is our classic stolen bread and as you can see You can see the fruits in the bread and you can see the almond paste. Really beautiful. This you're definitely going to want to cut with a wavy edge slicer, like the one that I have here. I had a little hard time going through the almond paste. And please enjoy your classic stolen bread. We're going to go ahead and put a couple pieces on the plate here. And please let me know how you're doing with this. You're really going to love it. And it's great for the holiday season. So thanks so much for joining us today. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. <music>